Good afternoon, and welcome to Apna's series of webinars on COVID-19. I am Dr. Harun Durrani, Secretary of Apna. Before I introduce our guests and panelists today, I want to give you the latest numbers of COVID-19 confirmed cases and number of deaths. Worldwide, 7.55 million confirmed cases with 423,000 reported deaths. In the United States, 2.1 million confirmed cases with 117,000 deaths reported. And in Pakistan, 139,000 reported confirmed cases and 2,700 plus deaths. Without wasting further time, let me introduce to our guest and panelists today. Dr. Faisal Sultan is Prime Minister of Pakistan lead and focal person on COVID-19, also CEO and consultant physician, medicine and infectious diseases, Shaukat Khanna Memorial Cancer Hospital, Lahore. Dr. Mohammad Said Qureshi, Vice Chancellor, Dow University of Health Sciences, Karachi. Professor Dr. Khaled Masood Gondal, who is going to join us shortly, is uh, Tamgha Imtiaz, Vice Chancellor of King Edward Medical University, Lahore. Professor Dr. Arshad Javed, Vice Chancellor, Khyber Medical University, Peshawar. And our fifth guest, Dr. Ghulam, uh, Dr. Mustafa Kamal Pasha, who was supposed to join us, but could not join us today as he tested positive for COVID-19. He's doing fine with minor symptoms. We pray for his quick and complete recovery. Representing him and Nishta Medical College is Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Ijaz Masood. Thank you all for joining. Our panelists are Dr. Nahid Usmani, President Apna, Dr. Rizwan Khalid, President-Elect, Dr. Arshad Rehan, Treasurer, Dr. Naseem Shekhani, Immediate Past President, Dr. Asif Rahman, Chair Board of Trustees Apna, and Dr. Aisha Zafar, Chair Social Welfare Disaster Relief Committee, and Dr. Sajid Chaudhary, Chair Task Force COVID-19. We will start our program with a welcome remark from Dr. Nahid Usmani, President Apna. Nahid. Ji, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you to all our speakers who have taken time so late at night to join, to update us what the current status of uh, coronavirus epidemic is in Pakistan. Aapka bahut bahut shukriya, khush amdeed. Uh, I'm really looking forward to participating in this uh, important dialogue because in APNA, our COVID-19 task force or social disaster welfare committee ka pura focus hai, balke pure APNA aur APNA ki membership ka focus hai ke Pakistan ki hum is waqt kis tarha madad kar sakte hain. So, aapka bahut bahut shukriya. Inshallah, we'll uh, learn a lot from you and we'll get updated and you will be able to ask, answer some of the questions that we have. Thank you very much, Nahid. Uh, very quick updates from um, Social Welfare Disaster Relief Committee and uh, Task Force. Uh, first, Aisha and then Sadiq Chaudhary. Aisha, please go ahead. Hey, Islam alaikum, Harun. So, um, since the last week when we met, we have uh, had, had a couple of updates. Our focus primarily was on food at that time, but the situation in Pakistan, unfortunately, has changed where uh, there is more need for medications for PPE, for oxygen tanks, and for concentrators. So um, for a while, we, we are shifting the focus from food, and uh, Dr. Sajid Chaudhary will give the update as far as the PPE is concerned, but we are uh, providing oxygen tanks and we are providing constant oxygen concentrators to some hospitals. We have started with PIMS, where uh, the distribution will take place today, and 10 of them will be given. And next, we will move to Lahore as Punjab, and Lahore, unfortunately, are badly affected. Um, and as the discussion goes on, um, the vice chancellors and the professors and uh, Dr. Faisal Sultan, who was here, they can give us more direction about where else can we help. I know that this is a huge calamity and there's a lot that needs to be done, but whatever little we can do in our capacity, we will inshallah continue to do that, do that from up now. Thank you, Ji. Thank you, Aisha. Sajid? Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Um, 
सबसे पहले तो मैं कहना चाहता हूँ कि अपना के जेनरस डोनर की स्पोर्ट से अब तक जो है हमने कोई ओवर नाइन हंड्रेड थाउजेंड डॉलर कलेक्ट किए हैं अपना ने और ओवर सेवन हंड्रेड थाउजेंड डॉलर जो है स्पेंड किए हैं और फूड पीपी तो कुछ देर से जैसे आशा ने मेंशन किया था पीपी पे इतना फोकस नहीं था लेकिन रिसेंट शिफ्ट एंड सर्ज इन पाकिस्तान सो वी आर फोकसिंग बैक ऑन पीपी और पीपी की जो उसके लिए हमें स्पोर्ट चाहिए अपने डोनर से एक किट जो है उसमें आ, सारी जो किट पूरी इंक्लूडेड है उसके साढ़े पांच डॉलर की उसकी कॉस्ट है तो वी रिक्वेस्ट आर डोनर टू स्पॉन्सर एज मेनी किट्स एज पॉसिबल और अभी पहले तौर पर हमने फौरी तौर पर पांच डॉलर की किट्स बलोचिस्तान में और केपीके में एक दो दिन में डिलीवर हो जाएगी ऑलरेडी ऑर्डर कर दिया है जो ऑक्सीजन कंसंट्रेटर है उसकी कॉस्ट थ्री हंड्रेड डॉलर है और उसके अलावा हम इस पे अपने डोनर्स के ये भी रिक्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं कि वो कुर्बानी के लिए भी अपना डिफरेंट एरियाज में उनकी उनको हेल्प करेगी तो आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल आर डोनर प्लीज स्टेप फॉरवर्ड हेल्प अपना टू हेल्प आर फेलो सिटीजन इन पाकिस्तान थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू आस्क अवर गेस्ट टू for an uh, opening comments please limit your comments to minute and a half to 2 minutes so that we can have maximum time for question and answer session starting from dr faisal sultan thank you ji i'll be very brief um so we are in a situation where uh, um uh, with time uh, the number of cases have continued to increase and some of this can possibly be tied back to some uh, relaxations that occurred uh, post the 11th of may uh but there is a temporal association uh, that's all that can be said at this time uh the current uh, stress on the system is clear especially in large cities we have high occupancy of both uh, oxygen beds as well as ventilator beds uh, and a consequent stress and uh, pressure on healthcare workers i think it's both a physical pressure in terms of the actual work as well as psychological stress from uh, being right in the front line um the, uh, the the quick uh, things that are being done at this time that have been in uh, the works for a while uh, uh, include a ramping up of the capability both in oxygen as ventilators as well as in uh, staff but uh, additionally um within the next day or so you will see institution uh, of a signal driven lockdown mechanism that's been in the building for a little while but it's ready now and ready to be in fact it's been rolled out and ready to be implemented within a day or two uh to allow um differentiated and more nuanced uh, shutdown of society as opposed to a uh, more blunderbuss uh, you know larger blunt block thank you thank you thank thanks very much dr mohammed said qureshi right the situation in karachi is uh, uh, that the disease is spreading there is a lot of pressure on beds uh the private sector obviously charges heavily and hence people tend to come to the public sector hospitals and as far as our system that our university system is concerned as soon as we increase the number of beds they are just simply filled up and we have people waiting in our emergency rooms waiting to be admitted who should really be in an oxygen bed uh recently there has been an increase in the number of patients we also do a fairly huge amount of testing for the sin government and where we used to have 5 to 7% positive rates now these have climbed up to 25 to even at times to 40 to 50 uh, percent of the total number of tests done so things are not good thank you thank you dr ajaz masood yeah thank you very much uh, situation to jaisa pakistan mein baaki jagah pe hai yahan pe bhi gradually badhti ja rahe hain number of patients bhi aur yahan pe cheeze available hamare paas bahut zyada hain kafi hat tak hain jo hum utilize kar rahe hain aur we are not uh, refusing anyone yahan pe number of patient jaise jaise badhe hain is waqt jo situation hai hamare paas usme taqreeban hamare paas number of beds jo hain वो मैं आपको एग्जैक्टली exactly बता देता हूँ कि तकरीबन चार वार्ड हैं सेवेंटी वन बेड्स हैं जो हमारे वार्ड में है सिक्सटीन आईसीयू में है हमारे और वो सारे फिल्ड अप हैं ऑलमोस्ट और बैकअप में सारे पेशेंट्स जो आते हैं हमें इमरजेंसी में लेके आइसोलेशन में ले जाते हैं और उसके बाद फिर वहां शिफ्ट कर देते हैं 
प्राइवेट क्योंकि बेसिकली साउथ पंजाब में दिस इज दी मेन हॉस्पिटल जहां से हम कैट कर सकते हैं इसके अलावा तैयब बरतगान हॉस्पिटल है जो मुजफ्फरगढ़ में है वहां पे एटी बेड्स हैं जहां पे हम इन्हें केटर कर रहे हैं पेशेंट्स को बट दैट इज केटरिंग आउटसाइड मुल्तान हम साउथ पंजाब और जो भावलपुर और इर्द गिर्द के एरिया उन्हें मुल्तान में लेके आ रहे हैं और जो किट्स वगैरह हैं वो अवेलेबल है हमारे पास और हम बाकी चीजें भी कवर कर रहे हैं टोटल नंबर ऑफ वेंटिलेटर्स हमारे पास भी है अराउंड थर्टी नाइन फंक्शनल वेंटिलेटर्स उनमें से सिक्सटीन जो है हमारे पास एट जो है कोविड के लिए और दे आर ऑलमोस्ट फुल Okay, thank you very much. So we move to our question answer session. I'll start the question myself. Uh, my question is to Dr. Faisal Sultan. That the number I presented in the beginning, uh, in the beginning in Pakistan, that 139,000 confirmed cases. How reliable is that number? I mean, my information is that the health department of Punjab they had did a random sampling. and then when they stipulated they came out that at least 650000 people in lahore are positive so what happened to that study what are the real statistics in pakistan specifically in lahore doctor so the yeah so the statistic you put out is exactly right uh, the 24 hours ending yesterday it was 23 hours ago the number of cumulative positive were 139230 this is actually uh, those tests that Uh, these are pcrs and that are reported through into the national grid you will appreciate that as we when we started because of our federal structure um, there was no real direct uh, connectivity between labs between provinces and the center and so on anyway so not to bore you with details but the fact is this was built uh, literally as it was flown um, so there is excellent connectivity at this time and there is no question of the lab data being erroneous beyond a very small percentage um the the reach of the idims which is the polio system has been leveraged to ensure that this is going on anyway uh, as far as the punjab uh, sampling was concerned that um had serious uh, procedural and and methodological flaws it was not really truly random it wasn't properly stratified and therefore the extrapolations out of this are all over the place um but i can tell you that at the end of the day um their the, the the percentage positivity as uh, someone else also mentioned has crept up so there's a whole time period and i'll i'll show you this or i can share you this um for the longest time if you did a test in pakistan which was really done in the testing contest or context of really diagnostic testing most be the typical percent positivity was about 10 to 12% this remained true till about the 16th of may after which it started to climb please note that this is 5 days after the 11th may opening up and then it crept up um, very steadily uh, till the 27th uh, where it reached about 20% and from there on nationally it has stayed at between 20 and 22% um so th- th- there is no question that uh, the the disease spread is there it's seen across all provinces all major cities and even in smaller towns uh but the extrapolation for lahore i think was a bit uh, uh you know there was something to be said there but uh, i think that that's all i'll say at this point it was done with good intention uh, and with an idea to gain a sense of the issue uh but uh, you know the, the the conclusions were a little bit uh, you know there was a little overreach in the conclusions Okay, thank you very much, uh, Doctor uh, Arsha Javed, uh, Vice Chancellor Peshawar uh, Hyber Medical University, has joined us. Welcome. Um, I will give you a minute and a half for your opening comments, please. You are muted. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it was uh, uh, quite interesting to hear uh, our Karachi and. Uh, as in Sultan's talk, uh, as far as KP is concerned, to be honest, uh, things are not as desperate as I can see in in Karachi and in Lahore. Uh, in KP, uh, uh, we have seventeen thousand cases uh, so far, and uh, yesterday was the only day where we had more than thousand cases reported in one day. Uh, obviously, in the beginning, the testing capacity was very limited. Only the Hamar Medical University was doing. the test with capacity of 100 or 200 today we do 1500 tests today but overall in the province 3 and 1500 tests a day as far as positivity is concerned in kp 
I was looking at my figure. We at the university have done 55,000 tests uh, up until yesterday, and one fourth, 25% positivity. But mind you, we in KMU uh, get uh, samples which are targeted population, either symptomatic or first degree or second degree uh, contacts of a confirmed case or from the hospital where the patients are admitted. So, and we have a very comprehensive sampling um, methodology. We get samples from Upper Deer, from Chitral, from Aurukze. So that's why uh, most of our cases are not from Peshawar. Peshawar, out of 17,000, only 1,000 cases are from uh, Peshawar, whereas uh, 4,000 cases are from Malakan Division. So our sampling is very well distributed. We don't, we don't have a as desperate situation in the hospitals. Our three uh, public sector hospitals, uh, Lederating Hospital, KTH and HMC, we have got large number of beds. Each uh, hospital has close to 100 or more than 100 um, beds. And we haven't heard that, you know, people are waiting to be, uh, you know, for ventilator. So, so let's hope for the best, although numbers are increasing. Uh, we might be tested, but we have got a good preparation, like our district hospitals are relatively equipped to cater for the patients who are admitted. Fortunately or unfortunately in KP, there isn't a big private sector. We have only one private sector hospital, Northwest, which is catering for COVID patients who have only uh, 28 beds. We get complaints about that because many people want to get there and there are no beds. Uh, in that hospital, but uh, the rest, uh, that's why we have got less complaint of overcharging and, you know, private sectors are charging a lot. So let's hope for the best in our situation. Um, I'm quite, uh, although the situation is getting worse day by day, but up until now we are managing pretty well. And Very in good. KP, the ratio of positivity overall KP is 17%, uh, where, you know, there is a, a sampling uh, on the population random sampling as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Khaled Masood Gondal has just joined us. Uh, welcome, Dr. Gondal. Uh, can you give an, your opening comments? Thank you very much and uh, salam to everybody and thank you for uh, arranging. I think this is one of the mega international activity. I just wanted to share my experience as far as King Edward Medical University is concerned, concerned and the attached hospital. I think uh, we started preparation before the first case was reported in Pakistan. There was training courses uh, organized by King Edward Medical University and then we had a various meeting to uh, arrange uh, the anticipated for these anticipated patients like the facility of intensive care, high dependency unit, isolation, quarantine. Another important thing, the Chancellor of uh, Punjab uh, uh, advised all the six universities to establish the Department of Telemedicine. King Edward took a lead and we established the Department of Telemedicine where the tele-outdoor, tele-psychiatry and tele-corona help desk services, they are there. Uh, around 10 specialists, they are available around the clock. We are also contributing in the CIA Corona Expert Advisory Committee, our four professors. The training courses, they are being conducted in all over the province of our university. Most important is the service delivery. Main hospital is the Mayo and seven are the attached hospital where the facility that is being ex uh, expanded. My friend was mentioning about uh, the occupation of the beds. Uh, I have just the statistic with me currently. The high dependency units occupancy in the, the city of Lahore is 74.4% and ICU occupancy is 86.8%. But we are expanding these facilities as we are anticipating these patients. And at the university, we are also conducting the research. 32 projects of the COVID, they are going on and we are now having the uh, special issue of Annal of King Edward Medical University on this occasion. And along with this, the online lectures and academic sessions they are going on. And every challenge that comes with the opportunity, and we take this as the opportunity, we are uh, 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 establishing these critical uh, care unit and also these units, they are being accredited for teaching and training program, uh, the university and the college, the CPSP program. And King Edward also intended to establish the Institute of Infectious Disease to provide the human resource in future whenever such a challenge is faced by the nation. 
Shukriya. Thank you very much. Um, we are getting a lot of questions from our participant, and we would like to accommodate as many as possible. I will request all my guests and panelists, <clears throat> if you can individually in the chat group and question answer session, if you can answer their question while we are taking some questions. And please uh, limit your answers to a minute or so, so that we can accommodate a lot of questions. I'm going to ask Dr. Asif Rahman to ask question. Assalamualaikum. Uh, I'm in car and there's a, a pro probably I will have an issue with the internet, but uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, um, anyone can answer. First of all, uh, I want to thank everyone from Pakistan joining. I think while coronavirus and pandemic is at least getting a little better and in control in some states in uh, in, in America, but I think we are hearing such uh, horrible things from Pakistan that it is uh, getting worse by day. My question mostly which I am coming uh, across is that a lot of people are asking that what is the status of antiviral medicines and, and people are trying to buy these antiviral medicines from, from US and another part of the world and trying to ship it to the Pakistan. Uh, particularly now the patients who are getting critically sick and I want to um, have some answer about antiviral and plasma treatment if uh, that is going on in Pakistan and if it is where so we can at least suggest, recommend and ask people to seek help in those institutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who wants to take that question? I'll take it. Okay. Go ahead. So um, of the two medicines that have some reasonable evidence for uh, benefit, remdesivir and tocizivir, uh, both there is a huge run on both Tosi and uh, Remdesivir, and um, so there, you know, a lot of black marketing, etc., has occurred. But uh, at the present time, um, they've been registered in a in a quick hurry, and they are being imported, and there will be formal, uh, much more formal structure to how they are used. Now, Tosi, as you know, was available, was registered already for uh, uh, existing indications. The only problem was that uh, you know it, it became short, and and the way it was being used was. A little bit more lackadaisically than we would like. So, um, at least in Punjab, they have issued uh, standard guidelines of how this is going to be used. Um, there, are, there is, of course, a national guideline as well, uh, but the supply will become non-issue. Uh, as far as Remdesivir is concerned, uh, it is going to have local production. Pakistan is going to be one of the few countries that actually does produce it within Pakistan, but that, that's um, a few weeks down. So, bridge that gap. Uh, alternate sources were found to actually bring it in. Also for TOSI, uh, it was primarily coming in from Japan, but uh, an approval has been given for this to be flown in from the US. Uh, and so that's in the works as well. So while there is a present shortage, I think this will be sorted within the next, uh, I would say about three days. Very good, thank you. Dr. Rizwan Khalid. Go ahead, Rizwan. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum to all uh, the uh, esteemed guests from Pakistan, um, Dr. Faisal Sultan, all the vice chancellors. Um, I thank you for joining. I'm the president elect of APNA, Dr. Zwan Khalid. I apologize to all the audience that I am um, not in a very professional um, outfit. I, uh, we just did a, a heart attack uh, PCI on a patient who is uh, probable COVID 19. And that's why I have to wear a mask because I'm in an area where um, in the hospital we have no mask, no entry policy, which, um, you know, something that uh, hospitals in Pakistan uh, probably can look at too. The, the questions that I had, um, and uh, uh, before that, I'm just going to use this forum to thank and salute all the frontline workers in Pakistan the nurses, the house officers, the medical officers, the registrars, the consultants um, for dealing uh, with COVID-19 patients in a situation where initially they did not have um, the support, the, the, the protective equipment. Um, now things are a little bit better. I, I know, uh, you know we can do better. Um, I, I know Dr. Fessel that uh, there is a government policy on how you are going to do the media awareness and there's a bunch of things that I have collected as far as from our task force and other uh, very um, interested uh, physicians in Pakistan as well as physicians here, um, and I will actually email it to you. But there are certain things that we feel that the guidelines from the WHO and, and CDC may not be 
um, uh, been uh, implemented in Pakistan. Uh, जिस तरह आपको पता है आपने मे अलेवेंथ की बात की है जो रिलैक्सेशन लॉकडाउन की हुई है um, and उसमें if there is a parallel to that in Arizona, in Texas, in Arkansas, ये वो स्टेट्स हैं जिसमें अमेरिका में उन्होंने रिलैक्सेशन की एंड देर इज अ सर्ज ऑफ केसेस एंड दैट इज वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट वी आर सींग इन पाकिस्तान के स्पेशली ईद के करीब जब देर वॉज दिस रिलैक्सेशन एंड वी वर सींग दिस हॉरीफाइंगली ऑन द मीडिया हाउ पीपल वर बिहेविंग तो आई थिंक के एक तो डब्ल्यू एच ओ और सी डी सी की जो गाइडलाइंस हैं उस पर गवर्नमेंट हाउ आर द गवर्नमेंट गोइंग टू इम्प्लीमेंट स्मार्ट लॉकडाउन और नॉट स्मार्ट नॉट सो स्मार्ट लॉकडाउन how you going to do that a uh, media awareness um, you know ppe ko aap kis tarah punchana cha rahe hain it ko kis tarah mobilize karenge textile industry ko aap kis tarah subsidize karenge ki if they can make masks and all of this stuff in pakistan kuch log bana rahe hain i know faisalabad mein kuch ban raha hai lekin how can you give incentive budget mein we did not hear anything uh, for an incentive uh, to the textile industry so i'll be brief can you please tell us what the government's policy is going to do for uh, dealing with this surge that is in all major parts of pakistan thank you very much if you seriously want me to answer then the, <laughs> this will take better part of an hour uh well i'll try to be very brief <clears throat> look um as far as uh, the uh, opening or uh, uh, sequential opening is concerned that in itself is a complicated issue but uh, rest assured that uh, all parameters all factors all sorts of extrapolations guidelines etc are not only looked at but drilled down in great detail uh you a lot of um, much was made of this letter by the local who country representative uh which was written to the health ministers um i i don't want to say more other than the fact that it was a uh, very loose and lax uh copying i should say of ideas that were really uh, not grounded um i'll just mention one bullet 3 out of this point 3 talked about nursing homes and you are from here you know how many nursing homes exactly there are in pakistan um the the fact is that the conditions that it pre that it mentions are in no who guidance document uh were it so that would be on the who website it it was really um an extrapolation from various places and ideas cobbled together from various places to actually uh provide a general guidance now we understand that uh, the concern is real and that's shared uh, but the response to it i think was a bit formulaic and really didn't Uh, go into any specific uh, details that could help anyone in decision making nevertheless and if you look at the cdc guide as well for example it talks about ha- not being about 20% prevalence in testing for example i just pick one out when you open when this was opened um, on the 11th of may the prevalence was 11- 10% so uh, and and so on so you know and and none of these can really be taken completely out of context you actually have to see the societal setup the impact on not just economy but on the healthcare um i'll just put out a couple of figures just during the three weeks of lockdown and the four weeks of lockdown 9000 children a day were missing immunization uh, uh in one province alone uh, the the estimate from the stop tb program is that a is 1.4 million additional deaths will happen in 5 years uh, in the five or six key countries and as you know pakistan is one of those so you know these things have to be kept in balance um, the the leadership when it decides obviously has to take in uh, multiple shades of uh, decision making inputs uh, but definitely all the technical inputs do go into them and and they're factored in uh, about ppes um, what you will be pleased to know that while five six weeks ago we had a huge shortage at the present time that is not so uh, if anything uh, there's been a huge ramp up in pp production locally uh, the only thing that really hasn't ramped up in the same way that it ought to have was n95s and even that's there uh, but there are issues on 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 how well the quality is um i will stop here because you know there is um, a bunch of things that i can uh, quickly talk about but um, Uh, otherwise it will be unfair to the other panelists there is uh, for sure i would like to mention for sure uh, a very serious fill up of the health system uh, across all cities uh, and again there is a response and reaction to that uh, there is a very ambitious plan for adding up a uh, thousand beds uh, oxygen beds till the end of this month and another thousand in july uh, but uh, this is just from the federal end but of course the provinces have their own uh expansion plans as well so a lot is going on and i think one thing that we haven't done terribly well is communicate well which i think is 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 crucial 
but uh, that I, I think I should stop there because otherwise I'll just keep going on. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Naseem has a question for Dr. Uh, Saeed Qureshi. Assalamu uh, alaikum, everybody, and thank you for joining. Um, basically, um, masla sara ye ke bhai, I need to talk to Saeed regarding um, Sindh ke baare mein, magar Imran Khan sahab bhi Karachi aaye, unho ne na PMSA baat ki, jahaan sif Karachi mein unke 17,000 member hain. Uh, beside that, mein Saeed se ye poodna cha raha tha ke, jo Dao aur dousri universities hain, us mein hukumat e Sindh kya kya role hai, aur overall Sindh mein kya situation hai, aur... Uh, जो जितनी यूनिवर्सिटीज हैं उसके साथ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ सिंध का आ, कैसा रवैया है या कितनी हेल्प है या कितना तावन है तो सईद साहब आप ये दो सवाल का जवाब दें एक तो ये है कि भाई दाव के साथ सिंध सिंध गवर्नमेंट का क्या रोल है और दूसरी यूनिवर्सिटीज और दूसरे शहरों में सिंध में गवर्नमेंट ऑफ सिंध का क्या रोल है शुक्रिया एक्चुअली जो सिंध गवर्नमेंट का रोल यूनिवर्सिटीज के साथ आ, directly nahi hai kyunki wo uh, education ka hissa hoti hain wo uh, higher education commission se uh, gavarn hoti hain jahan tak ke hamari university hospitals ka hai uh, uh, sevasta wo usko jo hai inhone funding ki hai aur is waqt dono civil hospital aur uh, ojha ki jo hospital hai उसमें बहुत बड़ी एक्सपेंशन की गई है इन द नंबर ऑफ बेड्स बट एट विद अ लॉस टू द अदर स्पेशलिटीज ऑब्वियसली एंड बट द अदर थिंग इज दैट पीपल हु रिक्वायर अदर ट्रीटमेंट आर नॉट अटेंडिंग हॉस्पिटल्स एट द मोमेंट द सिंध गवर्नमेंट हैज हैंडेड ओवर टू अदर हॉस्पिटल्स टू डाउ वन इज अ 50 बेडेड हॉस्पिटल Gulistan e Johar which will be open for services hopefully within a week's time where uh, we will be able to where, where you will have oxygen beds or what what they call hdu beds uh, as well as uh, ventilators have been provided and ventilators have been provided for that hospital when we have been given another hospital which would have been lying abandoned and half constructed and we are in the process of activating 200 beds of these 54 beds will be activated by the end of this month which would be a 16 uh, bed icu plus other oxygen giving beds with uh, uh, possibly cpap and uh, uh, high flow nasal cannulas so that, that that is the situation as far as dao is concerned JSMU is I don't think that that much involved in the COVID activity. J J Jinnah Hospital has been JPMC has been given money and uh, new PCR lab plus uh, new wards have been equipped. Uh, uh, ICUs have been equipped in that hospital. Across, if you go outside of Karachi, then there are other hospitals uh, who, who, which have been facilitated. and these are mainly the teaching hospitals the liaquat university medical hospital the then there is a hospital in kotri which doesn't have intensive care facilities but has been provided oxygen facilities nawabsha uh, hospital has been provided a lot of equipment as have been hospitals in sakhar and uh, larka the problem remains that we don't have enough human resource but we are trying to make do with whatever is available very good and here and actually the uh, government is providing us with doctors and nurses uh, they, they don't <clears throat> seem to be able to provide us with uh, the respiratory technologists but doctors and nurses they are going in fact tomorrow they are going to provide me with an extra five doctors and uh, 70 nurses very good thank you very much Nahid, Dr. Nahid Usmani has a question for Dr. Gondal. Please unmute Karle. Nahid, unmute Karle. Nahid, we can't hear you. Okay, yes. can you hear me no. now? Yes, yes, no, we can hear you now. Assalamualaikum, Professor Gondal. Thank you so much uh, for joining. 
जो मेरा सवाल है वो कोविड का इम्पैक्ट जो फिजिशंस पे हुआ है उसके ऊपर है देखिए मीडिया में मुस्तकिल स्टोरीज आ रही हैं मेयो हॉस्पिटल से भी आ रही हैं कि जहां मरीज हमला कर देते हैं जूनियर डॉक्टर्स के ऊपर और नर्सेस के ऊपर मेरी इस सिलसिले में गुफ्तगु डॉक्टर फैसल सुल्तान से भी हुई हुई है जिन्होंने कहा कि हमारे पास लॉज हैं लेकिन वो इम्प्लीमेंट नहीं हो तो मेरा ये ख्याल है कि हर यूनिवर्सिटी को हर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को कुछ स्टेप्स लेने चाहिए टू प्रोटेक्ट द फिजिशियंस एंड नर्सेस हु आर पुटिंग द लाइफ ऑन द लाइन नॉट जस्ट बाय टेकिंग केयर ऑफ कोविड पेशेंट्स बट आल्सो जो फिजिकल असोल्ट हो रहा है जिसके अंदर मीडिया और कोई सिक्योरिटी नहीं प्रोवाइड हो रही एक तो ये सवाल है दूसरा सवाल आई ओपन इट अप फॉर अदर पीपल एज वेल इज के एक फैशन पाकिस्तान में बन गया है कि प्लाज्मा इम्यून प्लाज्मा फॉर कोविड हर कोई देना चाहता है और हर जगह इसकी यू नो प्लीज आ रही हैं और एक बिजनेस बन गई है जबकि हमें कोई ये नहीं पता कि पाकिस्तान में इम्यून सीरम का कितने लोग इम्यून होते हैं कितने लोगों के पास आई पॉजिटिव होती है आफ्टर कोविड क्या टेस्टिंग है और इसकी यूटिलिटी जो है अभी तक सॉफ्ट साइंस है हार्ड नंबर्स नहीं है सो so, इसको किस तरह रेगुलेट किया जाए कि एक नेशनल पॉलिसी आए आई एम श्योर यू मस्ट बी वर्किंग ऑन इट लेकिन हम मुस्तकिल देख रहे हैं कि एक बिजनेस की तरह एक फैशन की तरह ये सारे में फैल रहा है तो इन दो ये मेरे दो मेजर सवाल हैं आप सबसे जी डॉक्टर नाई थैंक यू वेरी मच एक तो किंग एडवर्ड मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी के साथ सात हस्पताल अटैच हैं जिसमें मेो मेन है उसमें एच के हमारे पास 227 बेड है जिसमें टू जो टू ऑक्यूपाइड है इसी तरह आईसीयू के 50 इस वक्त मौजूद हैं 43 थ्री ऑक्यूपाइड है और इसके साथ हमने या डॉक्टर यासमीन राशिद इज प्लेइंग अ वेरी एक्टिव रोल एंड सुपरवाइजिंग एवरी हमने एक हफ्ता पहले हमारा अटैच हॉस्पिटल है गवर्नमेंट नवाज शिफ यकी गेट हॉस्पिटल उसमें हंड्रेड बेड एड किए हैं विद ऑक्सीजनेटेड कैपेसिटी और उसका आईसीयू में सात बेड है इसी तरह कोर्ट खाजा सीट को भी ऐड कर रहे हैं फैसिलिटी साथ साथ हम ऐड कर रहे हैं मेो में टू थाउजेंड अबाव पेशेंट जो है वो रिपोर्ट कर चुके हैं जिसमें तकरीबन फोर हंड्रेड के करीब नेगेटिव होके चले गए और कुछ होम आइसोलेशन में चले गए अभी मेो में हमारे थ्री जीरो फोर पेशेंट एडमिटेड है Having said that, आपने बात बिल्कुल ठीक है जब पेशेंट की तादाद ये होती है और अनफॉर्चुनेटली हमारे ईद के बाद जो पेशेंट्स हैं वो होम आइसोलेशन में ठहरे और पेशेंट जो आ रहे हैं दे आर कमिंग विद कॉम्प्लिकेशन यानी आप सेचुरेशन उनके देखें सेवेंटी फाइव एटी नाइनटी पे है और पेशेंट नेचुरली उसके बातचीत कर रहा होता है तो पेशेंट के अटेंडेंट ये समझते हैं कि हमारा पेशेंट तो बिल्कुल ठीक है और दो घंटे बाद या एक दिन के बाद फोत हो गया तो एक उनका एक इमोशनल रिएक्शन हो जाता है इसमें हमने एक अपनी एक एक काउंसलिंग के साथ साथ अपने तमाम डॉक्टर्स को जो प्रोटेक्शन और सिक्योरिटी है इसके लिए हॉस्पिटल की हमारी ऑलरेडी एक कोऑर्डिनेशन यूनिवर्सिटी के साथ चल रही है एंड वी हैव गिवन अ मैसेज अभी चंद दिन पहले थोड़ी सी वायलेंस सामने आई थी तो हमें वी हैव टू लॉन्च दी एफ आई आर अगेंस्ट दो थाने में भी रहे बहरहाल इसमें हम अपनी सिक्योरिटी को भी स्ट्रॉन्ग कर रहे हैं और साथ अगर एक दो पेशेंट ऐसा मिसबिहेव करते हैं तो सिंबॉलिक मैसेज भी दे रहे हैं आई एम श्योर यू विल सी सिक्योरिटी कंडीशन जो है वो फ्यूचर में बेहतर सामने आएगी बाकी जहां तक प्लाज्मा की आपने बात की है डॉक्टर फैसल सुल्तान भी शायद इस पे बेहतर अंदाज में बात कर चुकेंगे लेकिन हमारी जो कोरोना एक्सपर्ट एडवाइजरी कमेटी है इसने एक स्ट्रिक्ट गाइडलाइन बनाई है तो सिलोजुबाब इंजेक्शन के लिए भी और प्लाज्मा के लिए भी और जितने प्लाज्मा अभी तक एक्सपेरिमेंटल लगे हैं उन तमाम का आईजीजी टेस्ट करके स्क्रीनिंग के बाद अंडर सर्वेलेंस लगे हैं ऑल दो ये कुछ सोशल मीडिया में ऐसी बातें आई हैं मिस यूजिंग ऑफ प्लाज्मा बट अभी तक जितने प्लाज्मा म्यो में तो शायद इतने ज्यादा भी इक्का दुक्का केसेस सामने आए बट दे आर अंडर स्ट्रिक्ट सर्वेलेंस और टोटल स्क्रीनिंग के साथ है और हमारी जो सेंट्रल कोरोना की कमेटी है वो इसको रेगुलरली मॉनिटर कर रही है शुक्रिया Thank you very much. Um, I will just uh, request my panelists and guests to please do answer questions. There are some technical questions which the attendees are asking, uh, especially related to infectious diseases and stuff. I will request Dr. Faisal Sultan Sadeh Jawzi to please, if you can type the answers, because we won't be able to get to all of those questions. 
Uh, next is Dr. Arshad Rehan. Question to Dr. Arshad Javed. Unmute yourself, Arshad. Yes, Salaam Alaikum. Aur bahut shukriya sare mehmano ka ki wo aaye. Mera sawal, main I'm going to ask like leave it open to everybody. Ye kena bada mushkil ho jata hai. Isko kabool karna bada mushkil ho jata hai. In Pakistan mein aaj ki official figures jo hain ek lakh bayali sazar hain. Jab ke ham jo sun rahe hain, usme ye hai ki har ek ko کسی خاندان میں پتا ہے کسی دوست کا پتا ہے ہر شہر میں پتا ہے ہر گاؤں میں پتا ہے جو کہ سمٹومیٹک ہیں یا وہ پوزیٹیو ہیں تو ایسی صورت میں یہ قبول کرنا تھوڑا مشکل ہو جاتا ہے کہ پورے پاکستان میں بائیس کروڑ میں ایک لاکھ بیاریس ہزار کیسز ہیں تو پہلا میرا سوال جو ہوگا وہ فیصل سے فیصل سلطان صاحب سے ہوگا کہ اگر پنجاب گورنمنٹ کی وہ سٹیڈی جو تھی وہ فلارڈ تھی تو اس کو تین ہفتے گزر چکے ہیں آیا گورنمنٹ آف پاکستان اپنی سٹریٹیجی اس پہ بنا رہی ہے کہ ہمارے پاس ایک لاکھ بیالیس ہزار کیس ہیں یا ہم نے کوئی سٹیٹسٹیکل انیلیسز رینڈم سیمپلنگ اس کے بعد کی ہے جو ایک اچھی سٹیڈی ہوتی ہوئی کہ ہمارے پاس اصل میں کتنے کیسز ہیں کیونکہ اگر آپ ایک لاکھ بیالیس ہزار دیکھیے In no country, and I can so share this, say this with confidence, kisi bhi mulk mein sivai un mulkon ke jo who are the size of, you know, postage, postage stamps, can you test the entire population and know ke exactly total number of cases kya hai? What this shows, you jo aap figur bata rahe, what this shows is those that are tested and reported positive. I know it is hard to believe. I know it is hard to believe, but the fact is that While this was going on, some very crazy people were putting together the mechanism to ensure that every single test done in every lab, small or large, actually plugged into the main dashboard. But the fact is that all tests, all PCR tests that are being done are recorded into the main dashboard. Now, does that mean that does this represent the total uh, pyramid? Absolutely not. As you know, this is an iceberg phenomenon. You have the severest of cases at the top, then of course, then below and below. And there's a huge mass of people that is below this. And no one really knows what the ratio in any specific country is between those tested and positive and the, uh, uh, the system, the people available in the system. Now coming to the prevalence study. Yes, there is a prevalence study underway. a large national prevalence study, which is going to get finished in the next nine days. Uh, and about 80% of the work has already been done. Uh, and the next nine days, and about 80% of the work has already been done. So we will know what the prevalence is. There were two problems with prevalence studies at that time. Number one, that a good serologic test wasn't available. You will recall that the Roche test, and in fact, two or three tests that got FDA approval uh, was about a month ago. And at that time, even, even with, I'll remind you, even with 98% specificity, If you use Bayes' theorem, the pre-test probability in a, in a, in a situation where it's between 5% and 7% prevalence, if you do, the pre-test probability uh, of getting a true positive is not more than 48% or 50%. So there were serious methodological issues why it was not done sooner. It's, it's not that nobody could understand or figure this out. The fact is that wasn't the time because the tech wasn't available and the overall prevalence was low. So, um, so the answer is yes, there is a prevalence study going on using current serology and you know, within the limitations that you will know an answer within a few weeks. But there is no question, you're right. You know, finally, this has come, become experiential. There are people uh, that everybody knows that are positive. Now, how does that, that add up to 150,000 or 200,000 or a million? Really nobody knows. Now we have projections and those are AI based and epidemiologic projections tell us exactly Uh, way, uh, what the proportion could be. But short of actually testing a very large cohort, you will not be able to know the bottom of the pyramid. So yes, I understand the skepticism, but the fact is that uh, the, uh, the other thing, the testing capability. Now, you know, we started out with 400, the capability of doing 400 tests a day in four labs. Um, you know, the, 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 the number is exponentially higher. The last test done in the last 24 hours of 29,000, the current capacity is more like 50,000. And we expect to go, down, go up to about 70,000 uh, within the next few weeks. 
Um, so th this is a moving target and you are right. The, the test as reported does not capture the entire spectrum. It only captures a part of the pyramid which is above the water. I hope this sort of answers your question. Well, Arshad, you have another question for Dr. Ja Arshad Javed? Ji, ji. Uh, thank you very much. My second question was that Peshawar is a city of about 30 people and it caters to the whole Pukhtan Khwa as well. Situation right now is that there are most uh, 128 beds in HMC, 75 in KTH, 100, around 200 in LRH. Yeah, let's round it around 500 beds for COVID patients. Ke liye lag rahe hain. Kya ye kafi hain? पिशावर के लिए दूसरी बात यह कि मैं हमने यह भी सुना है कि पाकिस्तान की ऑक्सीजन सप्लाई जो है वो इट इज इट इज एट अ स्ट्रेच रेट टू द लिमिट्स आई होप दैट इज नॉट ट्रू तो मेरे ये दो क्वेश्चंस थे कि आर आर दोस बेड्स एनफ व्हाट आर वी डूइंग टू इंक्रीज द बेड कैपेसिटी पर्टिकुलरली व्हेन द पीक इज स्टिल टू कम डॉक्टर शजवे साहब यस uh, Ashad, your question is a uh, very pertinent question. Uh, so far, uh, as I told you, in Peshawar, 6,306 cases have been reported until today. And in Peshawar, there is quite uh, vigorous uh, sampling. You know, anybody can ring. There is a service called 1700. You call them and they come within a few hours to take uh, as many tests as you would like them to. Uh, it's a domestic service. Uh, and since that testing has started, you know, in those samples, our positivity is around four or five percent because everyone wants to have their test done. Uh, so, so far, uh, we have 400 beds, as you said, in three teaching hospitals. But there are other non teaching hospitals in Peshawar, like Police Hospital, Nasrullah, Babar Hospital, various small hospitals, Northwest, um, Kuwait Hospital. So, we have around 500 plus capacity, but until today, Faisal Sultan is heading one of the hospitals. I'm not, you know, our university is not actually attached with any of the hospital, but my, up to my information, we haven't reached a stage where people are waiting in the accident and emergency waiting for an oxygen bed. Uh, so far, I mean, we had uh, 365 deaths reported in Peshawar. You would know that a lot of serious patients from Char Sadda, Mardan, Shera, Kohat are also brought to Peshawar. So 365 deaths is not a very, a big number. So we are managing, as I said earlier as well, but the way we are moving, I think we will be tested and actually provincial government is working on expanding its testing capacity, expanding its uh, oxygen beds capacity, HDUs and uh, ICUs as well. I'll quickly mention, I'll quickly mention, address the oxygen question because others may not know. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Um, uh, look, the industrial capacity in oxygen, uh, for the entire capacity for oxygen production uh, is, um, uh, has been mapped. Um, at this time, there is additional capacity available, uh, but you must realize that there is, um, the, the oxygen that is produced is for industrial reasons and for healthcare reasons. Uh, about 40% of the industrial capacity is used in healthcare. Uh, and the rest is in, is, is in industrial situations. Uh, some plants are not working to full capacity either because of power reasons, et cetera, and those are being currently sorted uh, so that the oxygen capacity could be ramped up. So we haven't tripped up the oxygen capacity just yet, uh, but it does require some addressing. You, 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 Dr. Arshad, you've put your finger on a very important topic. The other thing uh, about availability of beds I'll point out, uh, the issue is that when things become short, they don't become short evenly, as, as is understandable. If you run out of bread, all the, you know, fortunately we don't run out of bread, but if you run out of bread, it may not run out in all in, at the same time in all the stores. So there will be some places that will have some and the others that don't. And anybody who grew up in, uh, you know, behind the iron curtain <laughs> would tell such stories. So one of the important things, resources that was crucial uh, to put together was data availability. So for example, in the US, when you call 911, the local dispatcher actually knows if there is a hospital on divert and actually the ambulances won't go there and will go to the next place. So here there was no such system. So uh, this whole national dashboard uh, showing not only ventilator beds, but oxygen beds and HDU beds has been put in place. Um, and uh, can you imagine the difficulty of five provinces and one AJK and asking all of them 
1,500 hospitals, 700 out of them COVID dedicated to actually every day, six times a day to report and update their event status. Uh, you know what the capabilities are in many places and, and to get this done has been a crazily uphill task. But I'll tell you, as of today, 77% of hospitals uh, were reporting their dashboards uh, multiple times a day. And that visibility is available on a central app uh, and is available to all the 1122, the emergency services. Hopefully this, this, will, this will get a little better. Uh, but I think in terms of absolute numbers, we will continue to be testing and I do see very difficult days ahead. Thank you. Uh, we are uh, running out of time and uh, I want to give some time to Aisha and Sajid so that they can discuss with our guest that what Apna can do further in this current crisis. But before that, I have a question for Dr. Ijaz Masood uh, and anyone else can also uh, add what if they want to. I mean, there seems to be a disconnect with like, there's so much myths and information coming from different places. Uh, there are like the governor sent in, a, there's a clip uh, going on every WhatsApp group, like lock, lockdown is a fashion symbol. Then we see these ministers and even prime ministers sometimes in the gathering, public gathering, not wearing uh, face masks. I mean, that sends, sends a wrong message and wrong president. And then we see like these ministers turning COVID positive. Um, so is there any awareness campaign, a comprehensive awareness campaign where like people can go uh, and get these messages? And on local level, Dr. Jaj Masood, is Nishtar doing anything to disseminate information about these things? He we are trying our best to dis transfer this information. But unfortunately, our disinformation is more than we are working. Every person is on their own. And uh, recently, uh, some people came and said, we will not go to the Nishtar. We will not go to the Nishtar. We will not go to the Nishtar. So it's very difficult to educate people. We have guidelines. Dena. Nishtar is doing their level best. VC Saab, or me, or hum log Sara, we are trying our best to educate people, to educate even doctors, jo periphery pe, unhe bhi educate karna, ye bohut zaruri hai. Unless and until we do it, ye mumkin nahi hoga hum ispe cope up kar sakte. Ye yeah, thank you, thank you, Jaz. Um, I will ask Sajid and Aisha to please uh, go ahead, and uh, if you have question for panelists to ask, I mean, what apna can do in current circumstances, specifically in the cities which are affected most, Karachi and uh, Lahore. Please go yeah, ahead. I, I actually have a request, and this is uh, from Gondal Saib and from Dr. Saeed Qureshi, because those are the cities affected the most. So you know, all are, mashallah, doing a great job. All we can do from here is just support, maybe send some equipment or some um, uh, PPS we've been doing before. But there's a there was a participant who asked an excellent question, and that is that, do, do these universities have a task force? Which and what is the composition of the task force? And is it on the website? Because we get a lot of donors who, like someone from KE will call and ask me, what exactly can I do for King Edward? Is there a place where I can go and look and see this is what is needed the most? I mean, right now we are just trying to figure out and think, maybe we should send masks, maybe we should send gowns. But if there is a specific place which says this is what we require the most, that helps me and Sajid a lot in terms of fundraising. We have excellent, very generous donors, but I think our frustration is who exactly is the point person? And I know that you're all very busy. And the same request goes to Professor Ijaz Masood because I know South of Punjab is very badly affected. But if there can be an individual task force for all these universities and there is a website that we can just go and connect with them and see what the requirements are, that would be a great help. Thank you, Ji. Aisha Zafar, thank you very much. Uh, I must be grateful to the APNA, Kemkana, and Kemka UK. They have been supporting. And uh, I've already mentioned King Edward has got seven attached hospitals, and government is fully supporting these hospitals, as well as PPE and all the facilities they are concerned are. In addition to that, King Edward Medical University is also supporting. Where you the specific committee, we had our donation committee officially notified that King Edward Medical University, which is the chair of Professor Ejaz, he is our pro-vice-chancellor. With Professor Saeed, 
pathology ke professor aur professor bilkis aur sakib se these are uh, four member committees aur isko hum website pe notify bhi kar denge contact bhi denge and we are very grateful to you people for all the support aur jahan tak aapne baat ki ki apna kya support kar sakti hai we already been supporting isme last seminar mein discussion chal rahi thi ki instead of putting the patient on invasive ventilation ventilators non invasive probably is uh, more beneficial uh, to is silsile mein agar bipap ya high pre- high pressure bipap if they can be uh, provided to the university and attach hospital that will be a uh, great help bahut shukriya ji ji yeah. same is true for nishtha we also do need these bipaps kyunki abhi yahan pe bhi yahi situation chal rahi hai ki hum logo ko koshish kar rahe hain ki sab ko kab compensate kare aur sab cheeze cover kare but the only thing which we need is for the time being is bipap otherwise pps or mask we we do have a lot of them or we also have got yahan donate donors hain jo hame donate kar rahe hain aur up to the mark cheeze mil rahi hain aur humne bahut had tak ise cover kar liya but the major issue is the bipap jo gonad sir mai itna add kar lu i think you all people are associated with the institution and you are concerned with pakistan but i must appreciate again here the government to professor yasmin rashid faisal sultan they are uh, i think coordinating with all the institution on day to day basis and probably in my attached hospital uh, to date there is no deficiency of any supportive thing but that will be an additional support from you people thank Mayor. you shukriya ji sajid ji ek to sabse pehle as a infectious disease physician mai thoda sa ye apne public ke liye bhi awareness ke liye अब बताता चलूं कि कोविड 19 जो डिजीज है इसकी अभी तक कोई स्पेसिफिक ट्रीटमेंट नहीं है तो जो भी ट्रीटमेंट अभी तक आई है जैसे मेंशन हुई है रेमडेसिविर है आप इवन प्लाज्मा एक्सचेंज है और टोसी है तो जो आई एल सिक्स एंटेगनिस्ट है तो उनकी एक स्पेसिफिक स्टेज पे स्पेसिफिक क्राइटेरिया है उसकी इंडिकेशन के लिए वो हर मरीज के लिए जरूरी नहीं है तो पाकिस्तान में जो एक कॉन्सेप्ट है जैसे हमें मीडिया पे भी सुन रहे हैं कि शॉर्टेज हो रही है मेडिसिन की तो एवरीबॉडी वांट्स दैट ट्रीटमेंट लेकिन लोगों के लिए बताते चलो कि अभी तक कोई कोई स्पेसिफिक ट्रीटमेंट नहीं है और इन सारी ट्रीटमेंट्स का कितना इफेक्ट है वो भी अभी स्टडी होनी है उसके बाद में पता चलेगा कि इसका एग्जैक्टली exactly कितना फायदा इनका होता है दूसरी जो चीज थी ऑक्सीजन के बारे में कि अभी हमें रिक्वेस्ट आई थी पिम्स इंस्टीट्यूट जो इस्लामाबाद में है कि उनको ऑक्सीजन सिलेंडर और कंसंट्रेटर चाहिए तो पहले स्टेप के तौर पर अपना ने 10 ऑक्सीजन कंसंट्रेटर अरेंज किए हैं जो एक एक आध दिन में उनको डिलीवर हो जाएंगे जैसे कोविड 19 में जब वेंटिलेटर पे लोग जाते हैं तो उस वक्त इसकी मोर्टेलिटी बहुत हाई है तो वो किसी भी मुल्क में जैसे अमेरिका जैसा मुल्क है यूरोपियन कंट्रीज हैं जहाँ पे बहुत अच्छा सेटअप है आईसीयू का वहां पे भी उनकी मोर्टेलिटी बहुत हाई है तो कंसर्डिंग सिचुएशन पाकिस्तान तो दैट मे नॉट बी एज इफेक्टिव एज एज आर रिसोर्सेज आर तो ज्यादातर जो मरीज होते हैं उनको सिंपल ऑक्सीजन चाहिए होती है बाई नेजल कैनोल तो उस ऑक्सीजन की डिलीवरी के लिए आप अपना जो है अब हम रोल अपना प्ले करना शुरू कर रहे हैं तो उसमें लाहौर के लिए भी हम इस शुरू कर रहे हैं तो हमें ये चाहिए आप लोगों से रिक्वेस्ट है कि बहुत सारे पेड़ मरीज जो हैं वो घरों में मैनेज हो सकते हैं उनको सिर्फ ऑक्सीजन चाहिए और एक मॉनिटरिंग सिस्टम चाहिए जैसे प्रोफेसर गोंदल साहब ने जिक्र किया कि इनकी एक टेलीमेडिसिन का प्रोग्राम है जो पेशेंट मरीजों को मॉनिटर करते हैं घर से अगर वो कनेक्ट करवाएं ऐसा जो प्रोग्राम हो जो मरीजों को मॉनिटर कर सकें और हमें नीड असेसमेंट हमारे लिए हो कि किसको ऑक्सीजन चाहिए तो मैं और आयशा हम अपने जनरस डोनर्स की मदद से मिलके वी कैन अरेंज ऑक्सीजन सिलेंडर ऑक्सीजन कंसंट्रेटर जो हमारी जितना भी हमारे रिसोर्सेज हैं कैपेसिटी हैं तो उन लोगों को एक्चुअली हम बचा सकें और हॉस्पिटल के ऊपर लोड कम कर सकें तो देट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर अस इफ यू कैन हेल्प अस थैंक यू we are also doing all the, these things ki hum log zyada tar jo positive cases aate hain unhe quarantine gharon mein karte hain jahan oxygen wagaira ki zarurat hoti hai we are trying our best kyunki hospital ki capacity itni nahi rahi jo hamare paas hai magar phir bhi we are trying telemedicine jaise gonal sahab ne kaha ki it's not only in king edward nishtar mein baaki institutes mein bhi telemedicine chal rahi hai aur us pe hum cover kar rahe hain shukriya uh, arshad has a question arshad rehan ji uh... मुझे किसी ने टेक्स्ट किया दो क्वेश्चंस हैं एक तो ये कि हमारी जितनी यूनिवर्सिटीज हैं जामियात हैं इन्होंने क्या मिल बैठ के कुछ एक यूनिफाइड 
ट्रीटमेंट गाइडलाइंस बनाई हैं और गवर्नमेंट के साथ गवर्नमेंट ने इसमें लीड ली है या नहीं कि ट्रीटमेंट गाइडलाइंस अभी जो हम सुन रहे हैं सब कुछ अब हर डॉक्टर की अपनी मर्जी से कर रहे हैं कोई एक एंटीबायोटिक लिख रहा है कोई दूसरा एंटीबायोटिक लिख रहा है क्यूटी प्रोलॉन्गिंग ड्रग्स लिख रहे हैं विदाउट एनी ई के मॉनिटरिंग तो क्या हमारी यूनिवर्सिटीज ने कुछ कोलेबोरेशन की है कि एक यूनिफाइड ट्रीटमेंट गाइडलाइंस और इंटरवेंशन वेन एंड वॉट उस पर कुछ किया है दूसरा हमारे एक ऑडियंस ने क्वेश्चन किया है कि क्या वाकई ये वो क्लैरिफाई करना चाहते हैं अरशद जावेद साहब से कि पिशावर में टेस्ट की पॉजिटिविटी 17 परसेंट है या ये प्रेवलेंस स्टडी है जो हुई है पहले क्वेश्चन को अगर इजाजत हो मैं टच कर देता हूँ सेकंड को जी अपना गोविंद साहब आप पहला क्वेश्चन आंसर कर दें तो देन अरशद विल रिपीट द सेकंड क्वेश्चन देखिए आरूद साहब जहां तक पंजाब का ताल्लुक है वी हैव गॉट द कोरोना एक्सपर्ट एडवाइजरी ग्रुप इसकी डेली मीटिंग होती है और देयर आर द एब्सोल्यूट गाइडलाइन जिनको साथ अपडेट करते रहते हैं मैं छोटी सी मिसाल देता हूं टोसिलोजुमाब इंजेक्शन जब इसका स्टार्ट हुआ दो दिन पहले इसकी फाइनल गाइडलाइन इशू हुई कि ये इसमें आपने ये ये क्राइटेरिया देख रहे हैं पॉजिटिविटी देखनी है सी रिएक्टिव प्रोटीन देखे फेरेटन देखे डिडाइमर देखे और उसमें फिर एक ग्रुप है वो साइन करेगा पोलोमोलॉजिस्ट फिजिशियन दे विल स्टार्ट द इंजेक्शन सो देर आर गाइडलाइन फॉर एवरीथिंग एज फर एज पंजाब इज कंसर्न अंडर द बैनर ऑफ कोरोना एक्सपर्ट एडवाइजरी ग्रुप शुक्रिया अरशद रिपीट द क्वेश्चन फॉर डॉक्टर जावेद अरशद जावेद जी जी और इस मौके से मैं फायदा लेते हुए पिछले क्वेश्चन में मे, मेरा वो नहीं था प्लीज मैं आप के तो इनिशियल स्टेजेस में जीपीस के लिए गाइडेंस या हॉस्पिटल से आउटसाइड जो जिनके पास लोग जाते हैं होपफुली गवर्नमेंट इस पे वो करेगी इसको पब्लिसाइज करेगी कि ये ट्रीटमेंट गाइडलाइंस ज्यादा सोसाइटी में नॉट एक्टर शेरी केयर सेंटर बिल्कुल बनी नहीं है नेशनल मिनिस्ट्री की वेबसाइट पे हैं एंड दे आर मेड आउट ऑफ अ कंसोर्शियम ऑफ इन्फेक्शन डिजीजेज एंड अदर रिलेटेड स्पेशलिस्ट जिन्होंने ये बनाई है प्रॉब्लम सिर्फ ये है कि यहाँ आजकल हर कोई एवरीबडी इज बिकमिंग एन एक्सपर्ट एज यू कैन इमेजिन दिस इज द नेचर ऑफ थिंग्स एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली नो वन अदर देन आर ओन फिजिशियंस आर ओन फ्रिटर्निटी इज पुशिंग स्टफ विच इज अनबिलीवेबल प्लाज्मा इज बींग पुश्ड एज एज एफ इट सम मैजिकल सोल्यूशन अगेन यू नो टोसी रेमडी तो चलो छोड़ ही दें उसके अलावा यू नो ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ क्रेजी कॉकटेल्स मैं अगर आपको बताऊं तो आप परेशान हो जाए यू नो पर्सनल फ्रेंड्स हुर फिजिशियंस दम सेल्स आर बीइंग सब्जेक्टेड टू दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ पॉलीफार्मेसी ऑफ द वर्स्ट काइंड सो सम पुश बैक इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड 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 वी वी आर ट्राइंग टू रीइंफोर्स नॉट ओनली द नेशनल गाइडलाइंस बट आल्सो द रिस्क्स एसोसिएटेड विद ऑल दिस यू विल नॉट बिलीव दैट क्लोरोक्विन जब ये क्लोरोक्विन वाज इन वाज द फ्लेवर ऑफ द डे अबाउट 6 8 वीक्स अगो तो यहाँ यू नो इन इन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंटायर स्वाथ्स ऑफ सीनियर लीडरशिप वर बींग यू नो गिवन क्लोरोक्विन एज प्रोफल एक्सेस नो लेस सो यू नो वन हैज टू रियली पुश बैक अगेंस्ट दैस एंड दी वे टू डू इट इज बाई गिविंग गाइडलाइंस एंड साइंस एंड एंड लॉजिक जी अच्छा जावेद अशे साहब जी जी वो 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 क्वेश्चन ये था हमारी ऑडियंस ने पूछा जी is is the prevalence rate 17% self clarification ya jo test karte hain usme 17% aapka positive aa raha hai igg jo antibody se no 17% pcr testing mein igg igg testing as you know that has uh, very recently got introduced and uh, it's uh, being uh, done as a the prevalence study which uh, faisal sultan was referring to and the facilities are available people can go and have their antibodies checked but what when i said 17% that is on pcr testing the number of samples that are being sent as far as the guidelines are concerned uh, i'll agree with the faisal sultan sir that uh, ministry is uh, their website uh, has the treatment protocols and guidelines that are also being uh, re- revisited and revised and it is available for every doctor in the country to follow and in kp we have provincial government has made a clinical protocol committee which is headed by one of our clinician dr noor wazir uh, and they also chip in with any local guidelines if they want to but we by and large follow the national guidelines thank you very much uh, 
we are almost out of time. I'm going to ask our guests to just give closing comments, one minute each, starting with Dr. Saeed Qureshi. Uh, you're muted. I think I've just unmuted myself. Gigi, go ahead. All right. I think the problem is uh, slightly social and uh, people are not ready to take any preventive measures, uh, let alone social distancing, which should be one meter. They don't even uh, keep a gap of one foot between each other. The other problem is masks. And I travel from home and ultimately heading for uh, Dow Medical College, I have to pass through a, 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 a residential com, a commercial area. And I hardly ever see anybody wearing a mask. And although the government uh, does tele television uh, advertorials, I think that needs to be enforced and that, that needs to be enforced rigidly. And if you look at it, even uh, national leadership, when they come uh, out publicly, they are not wearing masks, which is a bad sign and a bad omen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ijaz Masood, Dr. Ijaz Masood. The, <clears throat> the most important thing is we should accept it that it's a disease and we should prevention for it. But in our nation, this problem is that no one is accepting it or no one is trying to uh, protect himself and others. The mask and social distancing are very important, but we have to educate. We don't have to educate So we have to educate people. And until we don't accept this thing, that it's a disease, now in the media and in many places, ये चीज आती है जी कि ये कोई बीमारी नहीं है फलां जगह ने किया है वैसे पुश किया हुआ है सो दिस नीड्स टू बी एड्रेस्ड और इस चीज को हमें कवर करके फिर आगे चलना चाहिए दैट्स द ओनली वे आउट थैंक यू डॉक्टर गोंदल थैंक यू वेरी मच जी मैसेज लास्ट ये है कि वी हैव वी हैव टू फेस दिस चैलेंज एज अ नेशन विद द टीम स्पिरिट देयर आर फोर इंपॉर्टेंट कंपोनेंट गवर्नमेंट आई थिंक गवर्नमेंट इज प्लेइंग द रोल जितना एक्सपेक्टेड है उससे ज्यादा मेडिकल प्रोफेशन दे आर द फ्रंट लाइन सोल्जर्स वो पॉजिटिव होके भी ठीक होने के बाद ड्यूटीज कर रहे हैं डॉक्टर नर्सेज पैरामेडिक्स उसी अंदाज पे मीडिया इज प्लेइंग द रोल नाउ द पब्लिक हैज टू प्ले अ रिस्पॉन्सिबल रोल कल नेशनल लीडरशिप में ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने बहुत क्लियर मैसेज दिया है यूज आर द मास्क आई एम श्योर वी विल नॉट सी एनी पर्सन विदाउट मास्क फ्रॉम टुमारो ऑनवर्ड और आखिरी बात यह है कि हम इन हालात में अल्लाह से दुआ भी करते रहें और अपने आप को एक अच्छा इंसान अच्छा मुसलमान बनाएं ताकि अल्लाह राजी हो जाए हालात बेहतर हो जाए बहुत शुक्रिया डॉक्टर अरशद जावेद व्हाट वी रिक्वायर इन पाकिस्तान टू बी ऑनेस्ट बिकॉज कोविड 19 ट्रीटमेंट प्रोटोकॉल्स वट एवर दे आर देर इज नो ट्रीटमेंट Uh, and we have a, 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 a model of China and Huan, how they controlled it. So in Pakistan, uh, what uh, Ijaz Sab said and uh, Vice Chancellor Dow University, that people by and large in rural population do not consider it as any disease. I belong to Southern districts of uh, KP and in my district, hardly anybody would consider it as a disease because in villages every day, 10, people die, so if 11 people die, they don't think. So what we need is intense public awareness and uh, we have to inculcate this thing into people's mind that this is a disease and if you carry on like this, it is going to get really bad. Uh, you know, lockdowns, they, they are more to, uh, you know, cities like Karachi, we get, Karachi is a different ball game. Karachi is a huge city. But uh, we have 70% people in rural areas and they don't consider uh, at all this as a disease and lockdown or no lockdown doesn't mean in anything in the villages. So we need to, our clergy hasn't helped us at all. Uh, you know, they in the, in the funerals, speeches, in the Friday sermons, you know, they keep openly say that it is not a disease, it's just a conspiracy. So our people is, uh, uh, so our government need to intensifies campaign on public awareness to prevent Thank this you. disease. Thank you very much.
uh, Dr. Faisal Sultan. Uh, thank you, Ji. I think um, one of the things that I would say is, which has been said by almost everyone, which is that we almost seem to be living in two Pakistans. There is one that can only think of a lockdown. And then there's the other one, which thinks this is all a conspiracy. And it seems that the two are really not meeting together. And I think um, more and more communication and better communication and things that make sense to people uh, needs to be done. Uh, and as far as restrictions or lockdowns are concerned, um, there is, uh, you will see, I think tomorrow, starting tomorrow, inshallah, a very sophisticated um, epidemiologically driven, signal driven, AI based uh, uh, methodology to really find real hotspots, not just hotspots in, in a slice of time, uh, but with uh, changes across time, et cetera. I can't go into too much detail, but really built with a lot of sophistication is being rolled out. And hopefully that will help in at least um, truly smartly locking down uh, some areas that are real, real hotspots in, in large cities. Uh, uh, it's not for full release yet, or, or else I would have shown you a screenshot to tell you what I'm talking about, but maybe uh, you will see this uh, in the coming days. So I think uh, public education, uh, sensitization and masks, I completely agree that uh, when national leadership um, is not seen wearing a mask, then the message is, 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 is taken differently. And we're trying our very best that that uh, message is also carried uh, everywhere, including to the prime minister. And so uh, you would have seen, uh, I think, better compliance of that more recently. So um, I think uh, all of these things are important because I think prevention will be much more important, no, much, no matter how much we can ramp up our capacity uh, if the disease start, continues to spread uh, and doesn't taper off and doesn't really see a peak, then 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 we will be uh, overrun. Our facilities will be overrun no matter how much we increase them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I ask Dr. Nahid Uswani to give her final comments, closing comments, uh, I have received a special request from Dr. Sajid Chaudhary, Chair Task Force COVID-19, up now. He has one last question. Sajid, go ahead. Um, actually, Harun, uh, the question was uh, regarding the uh, home oxygen supply. So, I asked request that we have a uh, portal where we can see where we have the home oxygen supply. So, if we have a portal where we can see 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 where we uh, arrange kar sakein taake hospitals ke upar jaise abhi sab ne zikr kiya ki pandemic ek unprecedented situation hoti hai ye once in a lifetime once in centuries mein aati hai aur isme sare healthcare system choke hote hain jab ye uh, crisis sab jis tarah ki aati hai aur pakistan mein bhi definitely hoga aur hospitals mein koi jagah nahi hogi to usko load kam karne ke liye jitna bhi hum private sector mein ngos milke help kar sakein so, what is the guidance? What is the help? What is the data? So, we will act on that. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Dahid Usmani, you are muted. I am very happy to be here. I am very to be here. I am very happy to जितने लोग इस वेबिनार को देख रहे हैं सुन रहे हैं उन सब का बहुत शुक्रिया आई लर्नड अ लॉट आई थिंक के किसी को कुछ नहीं पता कि कोरोना का आउटकम क्या होना है अमेरिका में पाकिस्तान में इट्स अ मूविंग टारगेट हमें नहीं पता कि दोबारा सेकंड सर्ज अब हो रही है अमेरिका में जहां अब लिफ्ट कर रहे हैं रिस्ट्रिक्शंस Pakistan में हम वो देख रहे हैं कि lifting of restrictions से कैसे disease बढ़ रही है. We have no idea when it's going to end. Winter में दोबारा surge होगी. अगले साल क्या होगा? Immunization कितनी effective होगी? कितने लोगों को हम बचा सकेंगे uh, from corona infection? These are all unanswered questions. लेकिन it's all about preparedness and making sure. कि हमारे पास जितनी फैसिलिटीज हैं उनको ऑप्टिमली यूज करें हमारी जो रिसोर्सेज हैं उनको वेस्ट ना किया जाए आई रियली अप्रिशिएट ऑल द इनपुट दैट ऑल द वाइस चांसलर्स एंड डॉक्टर फैसल सुल्तान गिव एज वाइस चांसलर वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस दैट आई नेवर गॉट टू आस्क वाज व्हाट आर द प्लान्स फॉर द मेडिकल एजुकेशन फॉर द अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड ग्रेजुएट्स नाउ दैट वी कांट होल्ड रियल क्लासेस but I didn't get a chance for that. If you could answer it in an email, that would be really good. Because Zahiri, as vice chancellors of medical edu uh, universities, uh, your prime target is educating the next generation of doctors. 
But at the end, thank you very much for being so honest, truthful, forthright about all the issues that Pakistan is facing. I thank you for your contributions, for being leaders in your specific areas and in your universities and provinces. Inshallah, Pakistan will come out, uh, you know, uh, a little battered, but inshallah, it will come out of this epidemic. I thank everyone uh, for participating. Salaam alaikum. Thank you. Thank you, Naheed. Uh, at the end, um, I would also like to thank our guest, Dr. Faisal, uh, Dr. Faisal Sultan, Dr. Muhammad Said Qureshi, Dr. Muhammad Khaled Masood Gondal, Dr. Muhammad Arshad Javed, and Dr. Ijaz Masood. Thank you for your time. I apologize to all the people who have been posting questions on the chat here, as well as on the first Facebook. We have not been able to answer the question. This concludes our today's webinar. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for the office.